there. All right, so we are recording. Um, this is week five. This is our final week of Shoot for the Stars, launching directors. Um, it may be our final week for training, but it's not our final week to be with y'all. This page is gonna stay very much alive. It's gonna stay very much active. Um, we can't wait to shout you guys out whenever you um, promote a star, whenever you promote to director. We want to see all of the things and we want to hear all of the things from you guys. So make sure that as you're growing your business um, and as you're doing all of the things and getting all the promotions from your team and everything, make sure you're sharing on here and different things that you're doing because we want this to be a resource for you. Um, one of the things um, that we have uh, in the files tab is um, don't forget there's some verbiage in there of how to book parties, how to do um, um, getting PRV and stuff like that. So there's a lot of resources in here and we can build on those resources. So this is, this is not the final that you will see from us or hear from us because we want this to be um, just a launching pad, honestly, for, what's to come in 2021. We think it's gonna be amazing. Um, we did hear today that um, SFR is gonna be virtual. So it's no different than what we're doing right here. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you sign up for that because things change whenever you go to events and whenever you attend events. And it's no different than you attending this um, and your business launching from attending this than it is from you actually doing all of the things and um, going virtually to SFR. You're still gonna get some great information and you're still gonna find um, a lot of helpful things. So just make sure that you are um, plugging into your business and doing all the things um, with your team. So tonight we are wanting to, we're gonna kinda do a recap um, and then what we're going to start on is um, Week five is um, being consistent and maintaining. So week one, um, we did talk about your business. So we talked about um, your PRV. And um, when we started that, that was the first week of January. So hopefully everybody had an amazing January. You reached some of your goals. Um, you tried to learn how to achieve some of those and work to some of those. Um, I know we had some that were very, very close to promoting. So I think that this business um, or this um, training is helping a lot of people because we can actually sit back and we can see the growth that you guys are having. Um, week two, we talked about sponsoring and um, what it means to actually grow a team, to be able to sponsor somebody and to like have them work right along with you. Um, to me, and I know to Felicia and Rob and Tiffany, when you sponsor somebody, it's not just you sponsor and let them go. They're, they're a part of your family, they're a part of your team. And so you wanna work side by side with them because as they grow, you're gonna grow. So sponsoring was a big part of um, what it takes to get to star because if you don't sponsor, then you're not gonna get those four stars. So um, that's just something that goes hand in hand with it. And you wanna make sure that you're comfortable with having those conversations. Um, and then week three, Rob, whoop, 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 Rob. Uh, <laughs> so week three was all about your reporting. So whenever you go in and you run your reports and learn how to run your reports, that's whenever you're gonna see the light bulb go off. That's whenever you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I can see this person working now, or I can see somebody in this person's group or underneath this person that's actually working. And um, that's how this person is getting all of that GWV and TWV, somebody else is working. So it, it, running reports can actually let you see a lot of different things and it can actually be an eye opener to who you need to work with and who you wanna work with. Um, and Rob did post that on here. So we do have the, um, slide or the uh, slide presentation that he did for us on this page. Um, he's already pinned it on here. So if you missed any of the weeks, you can go back and watch them. It's on all three of our YouTube channels. Um, all of the videos are posted on the team on this page on the shoot for the stars page. So if you missed anything or if you just want a refresher, you know, just to kind of like if you're just there one day and you just like, 
I just need to go back and look at this, you know, or this is something that I want to refresh my mind with. All of these videos are going to be available to you and to your team for future references. Let's just say this is something that you, you know, having your heart that you want to go with your team. And as you're building your team, you think this is a program that would help them grow and do things. That's what it is on our YouTube channels. It's available as a playlist for you to use and to um, have that available for you to use for your team if you want to. And then last week we talked about um, um, building leaders, recognizing those leaders, how to pull them out of your reports. Once you pull them out of your reports, um, what to do with them next. Just because you can see a leader doesn't mean that a leader, you know, is actually being birthed. You have to work with those people and you have to do all of the things with them. So it's been, um, it's been almost like a countdown. Um, we intentionally made these weeks to be where um, it's a building kind of thing. I know some of you posted your homework and you posted your rocket ship and what you wanted to do to be able to get to that. Um, if you haven't done that, if you haven't made your plan, I highly encourage you to do that because running a business without a plan is just walking every day without any direction. So if you don't have if you don't have a plan for your business, then there's no way for you to know what your next step is. If you don't have a map, whenever you get in the car, if you don't know where you're going and you don't have a map, then you're never ever gonna to get to anywhere. So you have to have a plan and you have to write it down. And even if you don't know, even if you don't know where you're going, <clears throat> start with a starting point. You can always add to that plan that you're doing. So you can always take and add to anything that you're doing to make sure that you're growing properly, but you gotta start somewhere. So you got to have that plan and you have to start somewhere. So I encourage you to write it down to make sure that you're looking at that and referencing that to know that you're on the right path, to know what, um, what your end outcome is going to be. Whether or not, you know, you have one, one person on your team or if you have 300 people on your team you still need to run your team as a business and to know that you have an end goal and your team has an end goal and to make sure that you guys are working together um so tonight is week five this is our last week um as far as the training videos go this one is called consistency and maintaining your team um first of all I'll start out tonight and then Flea's gonna go and then Tiff's gonna go and then we're just gonna wrap it up. Um, but first of all, maintaining consistency and maintaining your team is huge, okay? If you did not have a team, you would not be where you are. So if, you are, if you're by yourself and you want to grow a team, this is very, gonna be very important to you because it's gonna take every single one of you working together to reach your goal and to reach their goal. If you work by yourself and you burden that weight all by yourself, then you're not gonna get anywhere. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to break it down into four star consultants are actually going to get you to director numbers. So if you're seeing that 2,500 GWV, that's kind of easily attainable, you know, if you're doing it as a team. So you don't need to what burden that weight all on yourself. You need to like even it out and if you don't have that many people on your team, then your number one responsibility is going to be sponsoring and getting your team to sponsor. So if you're thinking, well, I don't even have four people on my team, how can I get four stars? Then you don't even need to be thinking about four stars right now. You need to be back to the second week and you need to be thinking about sponsoring and getting your team to sponsor. And as with the GWV and you're getting the 10,000 or the 2,500, don't put all the sponsoring on yourself. Do it as a team. Do it as a team challenge. Challenge your team, you know, to go out and sponsor their own selves. Um, I know for my team, we have a sponsoring um, thing that we do. Um, I challenge them every month. Last week, um, we or last month, it was a challenge for our team to um, sponsor and bless 20 lives. We did 19, but on the first of this month, we've already sponsored three so far. <laughs> So we were right there at it, but um, but you you you've got to make it fun and you got to make it where um, it's comfortable for your team to grow. So you don't have to weigh that burden of getting all the people and sponsoring all the people. Do you need to keep sponsoring? Absolutely. 
Don't get to a place where you're comfortable and you're not sponsoring because if you stop sponsoring, that's when your team dies. And I will tell you that honest and true. If you don't continuously sponsor, no matter what your title is, no matter what your rank is, even if you're a star director like we are, if you did not sponsor, if I did not sponsor, then eventually those people are gonna drop off. You're gonna have people that you sponsor that are just not gonna do anything. You're gonna have people that you, um, you're gonna have a couple of people that are gonna work their business for a few months and then they're gonna drop off. And then you're gonna have those people that work their business consistently and they stay with you. So it's an ever turning wheel of people that you need to keep on having those conversations and keep on sponsoring because you don't ever want your front line to be diminishing and keep on going down because that member for me, that's what I call the foundation of my business is the people that I personally sponsor because those people that I personally sponsor are the reason that my team grew so much this year. When we were in March, we had a team of 50, but if it wasn't for those 50 people and the, my frontline sponsoring their own selves and then those people sponsoring and sponsoring, then you know that's where you get your growth. You don't keep that burden on yourself as far as you doing all the sponsoring and think you're going to reach those goals because you're not going to reach those goals. If somebody falls off, reach out to them. Don't, don't let them just say, well, they don't really care. So, you know, make sure you're reaching out to people. Um, I sent an email to every single person on my front line today. Um, I had some that rolled up to me as of yesterday. But those people that needed to know that, you know, I was there for them, they are my front line, and I want them to know that they are currently an active um, consultant because a lot of people don't realize that they're still an active consultant because Cincy's grace went for so long. So if you're reaching out to these people that feel like that you, they're not doing anything, they might not even know. I reached out to two last month and they didn't even realize they were still a consultant and now they're relaunching their business. This is the perfect time for somebody to relaunch their business and dig back in because it's a new season, it's a new catalog. And even if you want to do that, even if you are at a lull or you feel like you're at a point in your business where you're not getting anywhere, put it off as a relaunch, you know, put it out there as you're relaunching your business. You know, what better time to do that than with a new catalog, than with a new season, and it goes along with everything. And it's just the point that, you know, you, you can make it whatever you want to make it, but you want to make it fun and you want to make it interesting. Um, Nikki, if they, if they, if you reach out to them and they don't want to do that anymore, you can't make somebody work. You can't make somebody want to run their business. That's whenever you just have to go out and have another conversation with somebody else and find somebody else that's got the fire and the drive for this. Um, but you can't make them want to work their business. It does take everybody um as a whole to run a business and to work this business um when we say team that means that that's everybody that's not one person sitting way up high and getting all the goods from everybody else we all start over at certified on the very first of the month so everybody has to work their business to get to whatever goal you have for your own business so if you have a team and you're working with your team, then that's something that you need to make sure that they know that you're there, you're working your business, and you want to encourage them to do the same thing. Um, I think that if somebody falls off, you need to pick them back up. If they don't wanna be picked back up, then that's fine. You just continue to move on, but you do extend that branch out to them and offer to help them because you don't know what people are going through. So as far as, consistency and maintaining your team just make sure that you're working with them make sure that you're there with them make sure that you're staying in touch with them um it took me all of two minutes to type up that email to um 39 people on my front line um that's through your workstation uh maybe rob can do a um a spreadsheet <laughs> I mean not a spreadsheet a um, slideshow on how to do an email um, I don't know that everybody knows how to go into your workstation that's even handy with um, reaching out to your customers if you want to reach out to your customers if you want to um, 
reach out to somebody on your team or something like that. You just go and you click their name and you click email and then it, everybody pops up and you type an email and, you, and Sensi will send it out for you. That's something that's within our workstation that you can do. So making sure that you're staying in touch with everybody, making sure that they know that you're available, that you are there and um, I mean, to me, that's consistency and maintaining. You just want to make sure that you are showing up for your team. If it wasn't for all the people on your team, you wouldn't be where you are now and you wouldn't be growing. So it's, it's a team effort. It's not just you and it's not all about you. And it's not, I got promoted to star or I got promoted to director or I got promoted to superstar consultant. It's we. So we did all of this because you can't do it by yourself. So whenever you take that mental status and put it in as we did this, then you're more likely that you're going to get a lot more buy-in from your team because it's not all about you. It was not, yes, ultimately you promoted, but you wouldn't promote it without your team. So to me, whenever I recognize that somebody promoted, I always say, you know, congratulations to Tiffany. Um, you are now a director team. Okay, so I don't say you are now a director. I always say you are now a director team because it is something that they want to do for, you know, for the people that you want to recognize everybody's work because it takes everybody working consistently to be able to make these promotions and stuff. So I think Flea's going to be next if she's ready. You ready, Flea? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay, real okay. quick. Hold on. Go ahead. Can you take a pic real quick? Oh, yeah. Hold on. I don't have my phone. It's on the charger. Okay, hold on. I got this. Ready? Everybody smile. Katie, get in here. Katie's over here. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to mute myself and flee. We're going to spotlight you. Y'all, I did it again at the beginning of the recording. I forgot to spotlight the um, video. Sorry, that's my fault, but it's going to work now. So I like flee and I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Can everyone hear us? We're good? Okay. We got out of our bedroom, so we're in our living room. So Way more comfortable. Um, but yes, like I loved everything Michelle was talking about. The only thing I wanted to add to that was sometimes you can't control people's desire to work and you have to be able to identify that really quick on whether or not they're going to kind of like, what is that phrase? An energy <clears throat> vampire. So you want to make sure that the your front line and who you're maintaining and your team are people who are going to absorb what you have to say and take what you're saying and use it. So that was the only thing I really wanted to add to that because we learned that the hard way. But we get to talk to you guys about tracking your numbers. And I know he's going to have a lot to say about that. Um, from a consultant standpoint, tracking numbers is extremely important because it shows you who to work with who to talk to, who's been really awesome and then took a step back. It's going to show you who's recruiting the most. So you're going to be able to be able, like identify those people who will potentially be your star consultants. Um, and all of this is from your workstation. So we're given the tools to use for tracking equally like my workstation looks the same as anybody else's workstation it's just how you utilize it and how we work to make sure that we're tracking um he basically by running reports tracks monthly so from month to month um but you know i think everybody's had that let's just for an example use when we're doing like team shout outs right that, that's tracking. We're going into workstation. We're going to um, the month that we want to see how everyone did, and we're double clicking the PRV. Running the received report. Or you could double click <laughs> and see who had the highest PRV and count from 10 to 15 or 20, top <clears throat> whatever number you want to do. Um, this is great for you to start getting in the habit of this and saving those reports that we talked about in week three 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, in week three, we did talk about reporting and it's very important for you to utilize all these steps that we're talking about, especially when it comes to tracking. <clears throat> so you're going to see anyone in your team, if they're consistently getting 500, if they're consistently getting a thousand, you're going to see if they're consistently recruiting or possibly maybe have 500 to a thousand PRV, but they haven't recruited and they're still a certified consultant. Those are the people that you want to track and identify so you can start having these conversations about, hey, I see your PRV, you're such a boss. Have you thought about, you know, sponsoring or having someone join your team so that you can start talking to them about lead and star and the potential of growing in their business? Also, when you're tracking, you really do have to understand the compensation plan. That is something that is extremely important because um, we've come across situations where someone could quite possibly be one active frontline away from a promotion and they might not understand that. So by tracking these things, by consistently getting into habits on running saved reports or double clicking in your workstation, these are things you want to start identifying. Yeah. And so as a leader, you just, you always want to make sure you take care of your business and your business first. And by doing that, you're going to maintain your 500 PRV so that you can get paid at title. Um, and that 500 PRV to be paid at title, paid, <laughs> paid at, at title. title is the same, <clears throat> is the same for a lead as the same as it is for a star, the same as it is for a superstar director. Mm -hmm to get compensated for the work that you've done in the past with recruiting and coaching, you have to maintain your own business. And that is with your active frontline and your, um, your 500 minimum PRV. Yeah. And by minimum, that should be your goal to be at, at your minimum by the fifth or the 10th of the month, if not at least, or at the latest, the 15th of the month to have your 500 PRV in so that you can always make sure that if you have an opportunity to flip a party, to j get a host to join. Or at least by the 15th, know where your 500 is going to come yes. from. You have your parties booked. You have, um, <clears throat> yeah. So you, you have a plan. You really have that important. foundation set so that you can maintain mm -hmm. your business and you want to coach your, your people that you have uh, joined on your team to, to kind of get in that same mindset and to always take care of yourself. And by also doing that, you need to maintain that, that recruiting base or that the opportunities um, to recruit or have people in your pocket that you think could be potential good recruits. Uh, maintaining that, that list of 100 or the, uh, what's the, the form, Frank. the Frank form mm -hmm. uh, that we talked about earlier. But when running your reports to, to watch for the people Track. you want to in tracking people, you want to make sure that you, you have, um, consistency. Consistency is key, not only in your business, but in, in your leaders businesses. And for most people in this training and throughout this series, I think most people are those certified leads and, and uh, star consultants right now. And the idea here is to, to reach for stars to launch directors and, I think it's been subtle enough to say that each of us is trying to reach director. Each of us is trying to reach new directors. And there's a lot of really good income opportunities as a director, as a star director, or SSD um, in the company. Whereas you, you may feel like you're working so hard right now and you're still a lead consultant and your, uh, <clears throat> your check on the 10th isn't what you kind of expected and as the as time comes, as your team grows, as your PRV increases, um, that you'll you'll really start to see growth in that, and it'll be a hundred percent worth it uh, when you get to the point of reaching director by following the steps that Michelle and Flea and Tiffany have given you um, these last few weeks. Yeah. Um, our last thing, really though, five hundred. That is something that when we say is minimum, it needs to become more of a habit. It needs to be not if I hit 500, but when I hit 500. And that is, that is really like a mindset approach to your business. That's where you see a lot of people who 
front load, right? Who book a lot of parties, who book parties off of parties, who follow up, right? So get a really great follow-up system. It doesn't have to be like anybody else's. Um, start by the end of the month trying to book parties for the next month so that when the month does change, you're not scrambling to find somebody to book a party. It's when you're more comfortable in understanding where your PRB is going to come from is when you can really relax and start finding that balance. Sometimes, and especially at the very beginning, because I know I had that struggle, it's hard to balance having to have 500 PRV or more, having to make sure you're, you know, talking to the people that you're sponsoring, having to understand how to run reports and what things mean on workstation. It can be slightly overwhelming, but that's where you need to just break it up and understand if you can take tiny steps to prepare and know where it's going to come from, then you can start moving forward and getting better and consistent and tracking and running reports in coaching whatever that looks like to you but no one can figure that out until you first figure out how to track yourself and that all starts with the compensation plan and 500 minimum prb okay that was very good and one thing i wanted to say is i think that um knowing where your 500 is going to come from like that is like if you're a leader that's non-negotiable um because if you don't get that 500 in you're not going to get paid off of your whole team so that needs to be and that's one of the reasons why we started with our um working our own business first and doing our prv first that was why we had a whole training on that um we gave you ways in order to do that if you don't have that and you don't know where you're going to get that from um some of the things that you can do is invest in warmer of the month okay warmer of the month is 75 dollars, typically prv sometimes it's even even higher than that but typically that's what it is um if you don't have the money to you know to say i can't do that every month put aside money from your paycheck to be able to do that and then sell the stuff okay sell the bars and sell the room spray and sell the warmer and all that stuff you know that comes in it but that that is one avenue to get some prv you also can do scentsy club okay if it if it's a struggle for you to get prv and to stay consistent with that as a leader then try to talk to some of your best customers about doing a scentsy club so if you have you know five or six customers that are your best customers look on your reports that rob told you how to run you can run a customer report to see who actually orders from you every single month or who you know is investing in you to do that you owe it to them and present it to them as you're saving them money like tiffany you're buying you know your wax bars and your cleaning stuff and a warmer every once in a while and why not take your wax bars and cleaners and get a, a discount and get you a half off item without even having to host a party it's all in the way you're, it's presented if you just say join my club then they're not going to join your club honestly um be your best customer i don't care if you take and put six wax bars in a club or even if you don't have a club sometimes when you get an order in, take that box, open that box, and do a live video of, this is my club, this is what I got in this month, and they don't know that that's not your club, but it's all in the way that they perceived. I mean, why do they wanna join something that you're not a part of? So if you're, you're not going live and you're not saying things about, you know, what you're doing and what you're doing in your business, why does somebody want to invest in that? Why does somebody want to join the club if you're not even a member of your own club? Put you some bars in a club or even act like you're a member of your own club. If you can't afford it right now, take some stock that you have on hand or something, which you can do that, you know, don't say that out loud, but take something that you have at your house and, you know, 
do a live video of, oh, let's unbox my club and let's see what I got in my club and then explain the club to them. I have gotten so many people and I don't have a lot. I have five people. I have five in my club, but you know what? That's about $375 a month that I don't have to worry about getting because they're in my, they, these five people are in my club and one of them is me. One of them is me. And I've gotten two new club members just by going live with my club order when it came in and explaining what it all is. So sometimes you have to make it look inviting for them to want to purchase from you, but take your best five customers and let them know that, you know, send them an email and say, or send them a little note in the mail and say, hey, you know, I really think, you know, you would benefit from this. And this is what the club is. And I think that this would be something really good for you. So being consistent and working with your team and working with your customers, it's not just all about your team, it's working with your customers too, that are going to actually help you grow. So make sure that you're working to get your 500 PRV, but you're working smart also that that way when you do get that, you can do that. And yes, Madison, always pretend that you're doing something. If you don't own a diffuser, snag a picture of a diffuser and put it up there and just act like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, put it in your stories and say, I love my diffuser. They don't know that's not your diffuser. You can take my pictures. If you don't take mine, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you can, you can take mine and use mine and say, this is your own diffuser. Um, but, you know, make sure that if you are taking a post from somebody, make sure that you're making it your own post, all right? You can steal somebody's post, but make sure you're making it your own because you don't want the other person that might see your post too and be like, oh my God, Tiffany's got the same thing going on in her life, you know, and she's got the same picture. So you want, you want to kind of make sure that you're changing it up a little bit, but um, make sure that you're finding things that you can like share and make people, you know, understand that you love your business and you're doing your business and you're running your business and you're purchasing from your own self. And once you're doing that, then they're going to invest in you. So, all right. I, I just had to say that a little more about PRV, but yeah. All right. Now it's Tiffany's turn. Madison, it would do the same thing for unboxing a party. So whenever you, I was like looking at the top, like where, where did I go? But she does the same thing for a party too. She gets a party and she unboxes it live. Um, okay, so I am gonna give you guys and talk to you about giving insight and working with those that are like underneath you to hit their promotion. Um, I love this like topic because leadership is sharing everything you're doing. So everything that you do as a leader, you need to make sure that you're taking a picture of that conversation or you're taking a picture of how you're working during the day and you're posting it on your director's page, you're posting it on your team page. Um, I know that my people that are just starting out and they have like a group of three or four, they do a group chat sometimes. So I tell them to take a picture, post it in their group chat, share how they're working and post it on the team page. So when it comes to you getting the promotion, it's not just about you yourself because we can't do this alone. You cannot sell and get to $13,000 that you need to hit director by yourself. You need a team. And how are you going to teach that team to be successful? You're going to share with what you're doing. So I do tip Mondays. I love going live on my team page. My girls know this. Um, at some point on Monday, sometimes it just depends on what my kids are doing. I'll go live. I'll share a tip. I'll share a challenge and be like, hey, like we did the very beginning of the month, they went live on their Facebook sharing their story. Um, we are doing a sponsoring challenge. I went live Monday on that on my team page. So every single Monday I go live. I share, this is like how I'm working. Go do this on your Facebook page or I physically give them a tip on sponsoring. So that's what I'm focusing on this month. Every single Monday, it'll be a tip on sponsoring. Um, so I do tip Mondays. I love that. They love that. And it's me sharing how I'm working on my business with them. Um, also, when it comes to like you sharing the insight, we all need to be training ourselves. I just shared a quote earlier in my story today. And I was like, you never need to be the smartest person in the room because the minute you become the smartest person in the room, then you're not growing anymore. So 
always challenge yourself to learn something new every single day. No matter what title you are in this business, you need to keep learning and you need to keep like feeding into others' trainings and taking their advice and implementing it. Um, so I love watching YouTube channel um, training. I literally will just go in and I'll just search people. Um, I know that's really crazy. Me and Michelle did this earlier. We went in, we searched people and then we started following them on <laughs> Instagram and Facebook. We're like crazy like that. But um, they give you such good ideas and it's so good to learn from other people and not just us. I think that we, me, Michelle, Felicia, we work really closely together. So we work similar, um, but you need to be learning from other people also because what they do may work better for you. And if you see a training that you love, share it, share it on your director's page, share it so that somebody underneath you or somebody beside you um, or me or Michelle or Felicia could watch that training and we can get the same tip also. So watch the training, share the link on the page and then share your takeaways. Um, that's the biggest thing when it comes to doing this. Um, another thing with helping on insight and promoting is you need to make sure you're listening to your team. Um, a lot of times if you work really close with these people that are wanting to promote, they know what they need to do. They just need to talk it through. Um, so listen to them, just be like, hey, like what's going on and let them tell you. And they're gonna ask for direction, but sometimes you're just gonna need to like build them up. You're gonna need to be their biggest cheerleader. You're gonna need to tell them that what they're doing is right and they know that they are like, they know what they're doing and that they can do this. Um, you also wanna make sure you're running those reports. And if you see someone close to promoting, text them or shout them out on the team page or if they're your front line. If it's a leader and they have yet to shout out their downline that's about to promote, text that front line and say, hey, I saw X underneath you. It's close to promoting. Um, did you see that yet? And then they'll go, they'll look, and then they'll shout them out on the team page. So make sure you're like not overstepping that boundary um, because you wanna make sure that you're giving that front line the chance to lead but you also want to make sure that that front line is not um, missing that promotion, okay? Um, and I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to say something really good, but uh, <laughs> leading. So just make sure you're leading with love, y'all. Like whatever you do, share it. That's honestly how you're going to promote. You can't lead and just keep everything bottled into yourself. And chances are what works for you is gonna work for somebody else in one of our groups. So just share it. Um, and they're gonna be able to copy that idea. They're gonna be able to take it on for themselves, try it out, see if it works. And then if it does, like you can share it below you too. Um, you just have to be open to trying things. I tell everybody if you do something, you're gonna know within 30 days if that idea is working for you or if you need to switch it up. Um, and it's okay to like have what works for you now may not work in a couple of months and that's okay. So you need to be okay with growing. You need to be okay with changing your systems. You need to be okay with evolving and, uh, but never stop sharing. The minute you stop sharing, the minute you stop training yourself, the minute you stop feeding into leaders and feeding into those underneath you is the minute that you're going to stop growing. So I think that's really all I have on that topic. I hope it was okay. <laughs> yes. Can I, I wanted to say one thing. Can you hear me? Okay. So one thing that I love the most, when someone is really thriving in their business, right? And they're there and they want to coach and they want to grow and they're coming on these calls. The beauty behind that is they have a really magical why and a really magical reason as to why they want to grow and why they want to have these conversations and why they want to sponsor. So you're not just feeding them into, you know, work your business. You're helping them make their dreams come true. Because even the people who join and they say they just want free stuff, even the people who join and they say, oh, well, you know, I'll get active every now and again, but I just want to buy for myself. They said yes when you asked them to be a Sensi consultant because something in their head popped up and said, what if this could be successful? 
there is not one person who's a Sensi consultant who's just a Sensi consultant because their life is perfect and they have nothing else to gain. Everybody has something to gain. You can be the richest person in the world and you could still want fellowship and friendship and a purpose. So when you're talking to these people, when you're recruiting them, when they join, when you're asking them the most important question, which is why they're doing this, that is going to be their motivation to work. And that is what you're going to feed into. And just like Tiffany said, most of the time, especially with coaching, we don't even have to be the person talking. We're just that safe place where they can say the things they want. They can confess the success they want. They can um, talk about the ideas they have and us just be one of those people who either, you know, validates like, yes, that's a good reason, or yes, I think you should try that, or yes, go for it. That's what, that's what people need. And so even when you're thinking of your dream team, you're looking at the Frank list, every single name that you put on that list is going to be somebody with the reason that needs this business to thrive. So that was just something that I felt in my heart that I really wanted to share. Well, and and when you're um, when you're looking at your your reports the next few months, for those of you that have been consultants for a while and you see the people on the will cancel or the lose down line, um, like Flea just said, those people they join because they wanted something. They join because they they believed in the company. They believed in themselves at one point, and I think it would do all of us a, a good service to reach out to those people and remind them of that mm -hmm. um and just see what happens for those that have been inactive uh for several months and see what kind of maybe not fire you can you can start under them to get them back in their business um but see what kind of inspiration get them to rejoin again without actually having to join and click because they're they're already consultants mm -hmm. and that's one of the good things about the company too um and i like the way that they did the um the new will cancel stuff is it's always free to rejoin you just have to get the new um product material mm -hmm. so just uh when you're looking at your reports don't or understand don't it's not always just a number it's a person and it's a reason and it's a why that's it. Take us away, Michelle. Okay. Um, so I think that was really important what um, Tiffany and um, Flea and Robert said. Um, I think that listening is one of the major, major successes of being a leader. If you don't listen, because everybody, everybody has a way, everybody has an idea. Your ideas are not always the right idea. I mean, I, that's something that it takes a while to learn and maybe because I'm the mama bear um, and I'm the oldest I'm probably on here, um, that's okay. <laughs> um, it's not always um, something that is easily um, done to be able to give in to to learn new things to open your ears and to listen to what other ideas that people have but um tiffany said that was something that you know we're trying to do we're we're branching out we're looking you know for different leaders and um how they run their um groups and how they do different things and one of the best things that i think tiffany and i did um as far as watching someone else from sfr last year um melissa gratz she talked about how she um is there for her team every single week every single tuesday night she's there for her team and they know that she said she's been there for years and she will always be there for her team just to listen and to see what they need and um tiffany and i implemented this um whenever we got back from sfr we have a weekly team hangout that we do on thursday nights at nine o'clock and it's just for you know people to come in sometimes we have a topic of something that we want to get out of, of 
out to our teams or whatever, but sometimes it's just a fact of just listening to them, just letting them know that we're there, we're listening to them, we're listening to their ideas and everything. And that really is a sign of a true leader. And whenever you learn to release yourself and to take in what everybody has given to you and what everybody's ideas are. Are they always going to be right? No. Are they always going to be something that works for you? No. But is it worth giving it a shot and worth it listening to it? Absolutely. Because you don't know. You might could take something that Tiffany says and take something that Felicia says and then take something that you feel in your heart and make it something good for you. Okay, so you're going to get those little nuggets from people that you're going to be able to learn from and you're going to be able to do. The day you stop learning is the day you stop growing. Honest and true. If you stop learning and you stop watching YouTube and you stop um, trying to better yourself in your business, that's going to be the day that you stop growing and that's going to be the day that your business dies. So if the day that you decide that you're smart enough that you don't need to learn from anybody else, is the day that your business is going to die. Um, and we don't want that for any one of y'all. So we want you to make sure that you're listening to your team, make sure that you're taking their ideas into consideration. I started doing a Tip Tuesday. I want them to start sharing. What, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing with your groups? Because I want to know what you're doing with your, we got a bunch of groups that's up underneath our group. So what are you doing with your group? What are you doing with your team? I can't be on every single person's team and every single person's group, but I would love to know some of your ideas. I would love for you to share some of the things that you're doing to kind of inspire other people. I think we live off of inspiration and that helps us in order to thrive in our businesses is to get that inspiration because if we do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again it gets very monotonous and then you're going to get bored and then you're going to check out you know so if you have some new life coming in and you're listening to things and you're learning new things then and you're trying new things it excites me to try new things it really does today when tiffany and i were talking and we were looking at you know this youtube that we were watching and everything there was like a lot of good nuggets in there and a lot of good things that we can do and even as a director and a star director we strive every day to learn something new if we can't do it like this let's figure out a way to do it you know but you have to get to that point where you step out of your comfort zone and you do something scary because scary goals and scary dreams are what's going to drive you that why is what's going to drive you um the reason why you said yes like felicia said is going to drive you the reason why your teamy said yes is what's going to drive them so don't give up on them message them and see where they are and every single one of you will grow but you're going to grow better together if you do that and i've said that a couple of times this past week you're going to grow better together you're not going to it's going to take everybody it's going to take the soil it's going to take the plant being in there it's going to take the water i mean it's going to take the care so it's going it's going to be something that you're going to have to tend to and if you want to put it in shooting for the stars it takes more than one person to shoot a rocket to the moon so it's going to take a lot of people to get to where you want to go and to get them to where they want to go and if you look at it you're going to get to where you want to go but you're also bringing them with you so it's all in one it's all in one big thing so as they're growing you're growing so it's not like you know it's not like a one person kind of thing so I think whenever you realize that and you understand your team and you respect your team and you love on your team and you pray for your team and you do everything for your team and your group, then you're going to see a huge change in them. Um, how you are a leader is a direct reflection of how your team is. So the leader that you are and the leader that you want to become is the way that your team is and the way that your team is going to become. So um with that i think that we might be finished wait i have one thing to add. okay all right go ahead tiff hold on let me spot so, okay. okay so when i recruit speaking of like when michelle said we're gonna do everything together and you develop and you go up with them when i recruit i never tell people that i'm gonna be their like leader even though i am their leader but i always tell them i want to do this with you I want to do this beside you. I want to like go to the top with you. I want you 
to do everything with me. I'm going to send you everything I do, but it's, it's going to be a team effort and we're going to do it together. So that's a recruiting tip that I always do because you don't want to join someone and just feel like, or you don't want to like recruit somebody and then feel like, oh, you're just going to tell them what to do. So if you make it seem like a partnership, like we all lead by, then they're going to be more willing to join you because instead of you telling them what to do, you're going to show them what to do and you're going to do it with them. So that just comes back to always like leading from the front and never expecting your team to do something that we're not going to do. Um, and so I just think that that's a really good like recruiting tip. But I did want to add when it comes to leading, um, I'm going to try not to get emotional when I say this, but like you guys, you never know what somebody's going through. Like believe in these people because sometimes at home, their home life is not what like some of our home lives are like. Like we're, some of us are really blessed. So lead and believe in these people because being there and being genuinely kind to them and genuinely wanting to see them success, success be successful and just telling them that like, hey, I'm so proud of you and I believe that you can literally be the best director that I've ever seen that's going to go a long way and that's going to have like make them trust you even more because some people may not believe in them they may not have that support so you just have to be that person that is going to believe in them no matter what they do they may only put in 200 prv and you know like they're a director and they only put in 200 prv but you still believe in that person you still tell that person that they are the best consultant that you've seen and you know that the next month is going to be even better than the month before um just honestly telling somebody that and telling them that like you believe in them that can go a long way when it comes to them performing and them showing up so that's really all i had to say <laughs> I think one thing that um, I know Felicia and Tiffany and anybody on my team knows that I do, uh, I did that. Um, I really wanted to be very intentional with the people that are not always in the top 10. Um, Cause I, I can take my top 10 people that I send out my postcards to and literally maybe three or four you know, each month I might have to change three or four or something like that. But those are the people that to me always get recognized. And one thing that stuck with me at world tour was those people that are in like your top 10. Yeah, they are there, but don't forget about the ones that are working their business consistently. So this past week, um, I did a report and I pulled for the whole year of 2020. Um, all of my frontline, I did my frontline because I have a team uh, or a group of 308 and I could not do all of them, but <laughs> I pulled um, everybody that on my frontline that was active, at least active every single month last year. And out of all the people, um, I have 41 on my frontline um, before the first, I lost three, but um, at the time I had 41 on my front line and I sent, I had two people, two people that were active every single month last, last year, every single month. So I sent them a voice text. Flea would be very proud of me. That was my first voice text that I sent. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted them to hear my voice about how much that meant to me that they were consistent. They worked their business every single month. They were consistent. They showed up. Did they, it, did they get 500 PRV every single month? No, but they were active every single month and they worked their business every single month. And then I did one that for the ones that joined in 2020, no matter what month you joined in, if you were, if, when you joined from the end of the year, if you were active every single month, I sent that to them and I had two people that were active that were active every single month since they joined. So I sent them a voice text too. But one of the ladies that I sent the voice text to, she sent me back a message and she said, you don't know how much that means to me. She's not always in my top 10, but she was consistently working her business and a part of the foundation of scented shells. But she really, you know, that really meant a lot for, me, for her to get that message from me that says you matter. 
You know, you matter. You might only see your business as like putting in just active PRV, but you matter to me. You mean a lot to me. You mean a lot to the foundation of Scented Shells because you show up every month. So I, that's something that you, you want to look at different avenues. Yes, you want to congratulate, and yes, you want to give accolades to, and yes, you want to be positive, but you want to spread the love out too. You want to look at different ways that you can involve everybody on your group because when they feel like they matter to you and they feel like they matter to your group and they matter to your team, they're going to show up. They're going to continue to work their business and they're going to show up and you never know if that, that voice text or that message that I sent out or that post that I did was going to be the clicker that says, you know what? I think I'm going to shoot for something else or going to world tour or something like that, you know, that they can see that there's so much more, even though they consistently work their business. So you want to make sure that you're recognizing the ones that don't always get recognized. I think that that's huge. And that's a part of, that's a part of the leadership that I want to exude and let my, my group know that, you know, that that's just the way I want to lead. I, I, I lead with, recognition I lead with love I lead with you know I'm here for you whatever you want to do I'm I'm 500% your cheerleader so that's just something that I just I wanted to throw out there don't always stop and recognize just your top 10 because you have other people that are the foundation that are obviously working their business to keep you where you are so anybody else I think I have one more thing to say don't hate me I'm not okay. hating you this is the, this is it. You got to get it out. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people underneath us too. Um, like a lot of our downline has really bad anxiety. Um, I have one girl underneath me who has horrible anxiety. So I want to tell you guys what I do in that situation. Um, just so you know how to lead in this like situation. I, um, when her anxiety gets really bad is when she like starts overloading herself. Um, she can't do more than one thing at one time or she gets extremely stressed out. Um, and so she's, she was one of my top producers for a while and then it got really bad. So how I started doing it was whenever she completes her task, she only does one thing a day. So that's what I've been like very specific with her. What are you doing? One thing. Cause she was trying to recruit. She was trying to do PRV book parties. And I was like, stop one thing a day and that's gonna make you money. And so she does one thing a day, and if it gets too much, tell them to text you, and you're gonna walk them through it. Um, I've learned that a lot of times with like people that have anxiety, just kind of talking them through it, and just like letting them know that you're there for them, you support them, and just letting them kind of word vomit on you, that's gonna go a long way and help calm them down, and you're gonna be able to steer them back on track um so keep yourself open for that i know sometimes our schedules are really crazy and we're doing something um and you can't always answer like right when they text you and that's fine um but just let them know that if they start to have like an anxiety attack while they're working to text you and you're gonna walk them through it and then just encourage them um i did want to say that because i think anxiety is like really bad right now with a lot of people so it just needs to be talked about and how to lead through it so i think i'm really done this time though <laughs> okay i have one more thing one more thing and then because it is the last week but um even as star director superstar director lead consultant certified you have to understand, and I think I touched base on this a little bit last week, you have to give yourself grace. What we're doing this spring and summer is not what we did fall and winter. You know, like we changed our marketing. We changed our approach on how we're booking parties. We changed our approach on PRV and tracking. And, um, you know, like I love doing Zooms. I was telling Michelle and Tiffany this. I can train and coach on a Zoom because I have a mute button. I am the kind of person I need a mute button. Sometimes what I say does not need to be recorded. <laughs> and my life is extremely unpredictable. So live has always been something that gives me anxiety, like Tiffany said. I, I have so much anxiety because my life is unpredictable. If lives came with a mute button, I would do it all the time for my team. But it doesn't. So 
you know, I have to give myself grace and understand, like, maybe I haven't gone live on my team page and I've only filled their cups by making posts that are a little wordy or doing Zooms because I, this is my comfort zone, but I can implement my comfort zone like Zooms on my team. So instead of going live, I can drop a link and say, hey, if you have time, come join me, but I'm gonna record this and this is on my heart and I wanna share it with my team. I can do that and that is what I'm going to start doing this year or at least this, I work in six months. I like to do catalog to catalog because I really do enjoy saying, okay, this worked and this didn't work from the last catalog and I'm gonna implement this and I'm gonna change this in the next. So I'm always giving myself grace and truly the biggest thing you guys need to understand in this business is every single day has the same exact opportunities as yesterday with Sensi. You never know if the one person you follow up with is gonna drop $500 on your website. You can't ever say I'm never gonna have 500 PRV. You just have to keep asking people until you eventually get there. It's when you go belly up and you quit. That's when you know you're never gonna get paid a title. That's when you know you're never gonna get better at marketing. You know. I made this post, there is endless resources to everything we suck at. And I say it all the time, the best thing you can know about yourself is the worst things you're, like, you're, you're not good at. Because the second you can say, okay, I'm not good at going live, you can start to dissect ways to get better at it or find different avenues to do the same thing and get the same results. So, even at superstar director, even at certified, there's, there's certified consultants who go live all day, every day. And I literally drool because I'm like, I want that confidence. I wish I could do that. And all I have to do is do it. All I have to do is say five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to get better at that. And I am, you know, like Thursdays, th Thursdays are going to now be my days where I do try and go live where I do this is Zoom, where I have him make me a link and I post it on my team page and say, hey, I'm going to do this today and I'm going to let you guys know when I'm on. Um, there's always a way, there's always a way in this business to do better. There's, there's a million YouTubes out there for verbiage just on booking parties, just on how to recruit. You can take all of our trainings and then you can go and look up key notes that we talked about and look up from other people. You always have to fill your cup and you always have to give yourself grace and say like, maybe yesterday I wasn't good at it, but tomorrow I'm going to be better. And that applies to everything in our business, everything in our life, truly. Like if you, you have to give yourself grace in your life because another thing I've noticed is our life determines a lot about our business. You'll see people who are going through a hard time and they either one or two things, they fixate on their business or they step away from their business. Well, and like Madison asked something about going live uh, when Felicia was talking about that. Oh, um, I can't read it. I said her biggest supporter was her toddler to smell the scents. Mm -hmm. There is a mom somewhere that's scrolling her newsfeed that needs to see you and the baby smelling those scents. And whether the toddler can speak or ooh or ah. Um, or hit you. We, I think Felicia has in the past gone live with like Jenna uh, when she was younger. How's this the smell is why like? I, this is why I have live anxiety. She told, Everything I told her. like soap. I coached her for like five mm. minutes before. I was like, this smells like this and this smells like that. We go live. She goes, that smells like soap. Yeah, that everything smells smelled like soap. Like soap. And and it, was dead. it was miserable. It was it was terrible. terrible. But it had people interactive. It was bad. It had people. Um, it had people asking questions. It had people interested, and Not it, me. it wasn't intentional. <laughs> Anxiety. It wasn't intentional, but but that chaos of that storm of soap, everything just smelled like <laughs> soap. soap, was terrible for us. Mm -hmm. But it got people active. It got people Laughing. interested. It and and. I'm telling you, there's a there's a mom somewhere bored out of her mind, scrolling Facebook with nobody to talk to that you're friends with on social mm -hmm. that could potentially be that that person. And that's that person and that's a lot of what Felicia refers to as planting the seeds yes. and staying active because those are the people that will eventually come to you 
that want help and they want to join and they want that friendship and they see what you have and they see how comfortable you've gotten through your your live um, or just your videos of posting or, or being in your stories. But even understanding my title doesn't matter. I've just been doing this a long time and I've been doing this a long time and I still have anxiety over things. I still struggle over a lot and that's okay. My team, my group, my directors, my leaders, my new recruits, they all get the same version of me. A hot mess who likes to mute, which is why I even love Messenger because I can mute it. Um, but I give myself grace. Another thing is I never try and keep something to myself. If I make a business card that I feel like, okay, someone could use this, someone can benefit from this. You know, a lot of people are buying a bunch of catalogs. How can we simplify that? Because I don't want to spend a lot of money on shipping. I share it. You guys have to understand, and I'm getting super passionate, but I'll be dumb after this. What you have to say that you choose not to because you're afraid no one's going to like it is exactly what people need to hear. Participate on these team pages. Participate in your leadership pages. Participate and share what you're doing. Share what you're struggling with. There's a million people, maybe not a million because I think our team page only has 200, but if you use our team page and you say, I am struggling really hard on this topic. What have you done? Or does anyone have advice? Let them help you fill your cup. Even and if you're the one with the question. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but here's our problem. It, it's turned into a flea show, a Tiffany show, a Michelle show, or a leader show. And we don't have all the answers and we don't have all the fun things. We want to learn too, and you guys fill our cups. I love coaching calls because I gain just as much from them. So I know that was kind of a rant, but I am going to work on going live. You guys might not see it on the shoot for the stars, but on my team pages and my leaders and all of that, like they're going to get the hot mess flea that they always do, but I'm going to be brave. And that's the thing. If you're not recruiting, be brave and just ask somebody. If you're not getting high PRV or just PRV in general, be brave and ask somebody. Be brave enough to refill your cup with knowledge and figure out a new way and always give yourself grace in this business. And it doesn't just apply to you. Give your team grace too. Life sucks and sometimes life doesn't suck. And on both parts of that someone could step away from Cincy and you have to be that person who either understands it or gets upset about it and you have to give them grace and always be there for them there's people who are a star consultant from three years ago on my team who can message me today and say hey I really want to get back into it I really want to recruit and I'm going to pick it up just like I did the day that they joined because their timeline I'm not in control of that but I am always here to help them get to where they want to go. So that's it. I know I ranted. Sorry, I do that a lot, but I love you guys. No, you were very good. It was all very good. And I think like the, the few things that we can take away from this, um, definitely give yourself grace. Um, definitely give your team grace um, and listen to them and listen to yourself. Uh, I think if we can like lead like that, even if it's just one, and I know Madison said, what if I only have a team of one? That's all it takes is just one. I had a team of one for so long. Well, I had a team of me for two years and then I recruited one and I have a team of one for so long, <laughs> you know, so it doesn't matter that timeline, like Felicia was saying that timeline, you don't know what that person's timeline is. Um, so wherever they are in their walk in the Cincy business, they're walking. Okay. If they, if they've laid down their kit for three months and they haven't done anything for three months, you know what? They're still an active consultant. So if they decide to say tomorrow, you know, Michelle, I'm ready to start. I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to, you know, do whatever. Then it's like Flea said, it's like, it's like no time has passed. Okay, no time is no time is coming between whenever they made their last sale or even if they haven't even made a sale yet. No time is coming between 
the time starts tomorrow. The biggest thing that you can take away is in this whole training is we all start new every single day. We all wake up with the same decision. Are we going to work our business? Are we going to help our team work our work their business? And are we going to get out of our business what we want to get out of our business? Every morning when you wake up, the day is new. So it's, it's however you decide you want to work your business and however you decide you want to lead, lead your team, that's up to you every single morning. If you wake up and you're having a bad morning, you know what? In 24 hours when you wake up again, you could have the best day ever in your Scentsy business. So don't give up on it. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Um, just make sure that you're being consistent that you're maintaining and you're doing all your business and I trust me over time it's going to come um some people are faster than others some people are slower than others I'm a slower I'm a slower person but that's okay I'm a thorough person I feel like that the things that I've learned along the way and the things that I'm still learning to this day today I was watching a YouTube video don't ever start learn, stop learning don't ever stop you know, thinking, you know, that it's, it's over. I've done all I can do and I've reached my limit because this is a limitless build business, limitless. You can do whatever you want out of it as long as you, as long as you keep doing it. So, um, I thank all of you for showing up. Um, I know that, um, these five weeks just seem like they flew by to me. I don't know about to all of y'all. Um, but I feel like that it's been an amazing journey and I cannot wait to see, um, where we go from here. And I know Felicia and Tiffany probably feel the same way. So, um, we love you guys. I'm going to start recording. Wait, I want to sure. say one more thing before we hop off. Okay. Hold on. You can stop the recording. No, hold on. You want me to stop it or you want to leave it? It's fine either way. Okay. I'll leave it. Okay. Um, I'm like so proud of you guys for showing up and just like participating and doing this. Um, you guys mean the world to us three. We literally love you guys so much and nothing makes us happier than watching you guys be so successful in your business and just investing and loving your team so hard. So I just wanted to say that we're really proud of you guys and we cannot wait to see you bloom so hard in the spring and then go into the fall and earn all the incentive. So. All right, Flea, I'm spotlighting you to say your goodbyes. <laughs> I'm muted in all the places. <laughs> no, seriously, I think Rob and I have enjoyed this so much, getting to know you guys, getting to see your faces consistently, even just getting to meet some of the people from Tiffany's team and Michelle's team. And also, you know, from mine and Rob's group, we don't just have people coming from Enduring Sense, but we have people coming from other directors within our group. And we don't get the opportunity to talk to you guys every day. We don't get the opportunity to see you and share with you and build you up and fill your cups and you guys fill our cups. So thank you so much for just coming on, even if it was only one week, two weeks, all five weeks. Um, this was a project of love from all of us and something that was on our hearts because we love you guys. So um, thank you. And Michelle and Tiffany, thank you for having me and letting me rant and <sighs> accepting my crazy. I love you guys. We love you. All right. I'm going to stop the recording.